Hello and welcome to Spirals Design. In today's tutorial, I'll teach you how to create this 3D text effects using Adobe Illustrator. First of all, I create a document and then I type the text that I want. I type urban, that's the text for today's effect. I set the font size 200. And I choose a font which is a little bit of bolder font because I think by doing that uh, we have more freedom to work on our 3D object. And uh, if you if you see it clearly now the fonts are uh, very close together so I need a little bit of kerning adjustment in order to uh, give it a more clear space around the uh, letters. So I increase the kerning by 50 pixels. So it gives me a little bit of breathing space between the letters so our effect will not look cluttered. So then I convert the font to outlines and then I apply a sort of a mid blue. And then I'm going to select the object and make a copy in front of it edit copy and paste in front so I get a duplicate then I go to the layer palette and I create another layer and click and drag this blue button uh, to the uh, top layer so I have secured one copy of the original text then I uh, go to the move tool and double click on the move tool and put 10 by 10 pixels to get another copy of the same so now we are trying to create the 3D effect uh, using these letters. So I select both of them. And I go to object, blend and make. I need to create it simple as possible. I can do it by adding more details but it will make it heavy. So that's why I do this. Then I uh, go to the blending options and select uh, one. At, that's the lowest detail that you can give. All right. So now we have the object like this. So I select both of them and then I expand the blend so I can work freely on the art. Right. Now. I combine them uh, either with using Pathfinder palette or with the properties panel you can do it mm -hmm. now you will get a result something like that then I go to the layer palette and I unhide the one that we copied so we have the reference element that we can uh, see whenever we do in the uh, 3d object so now I go back to the old uh, back layer behind layer where, where I can select the 3d element of it And then I go to pen tool and I start deleting these points to create the 3D effect. I'll continue doing that for the other, other letters as well. Especially in this rounded area, it can be tricky, but you got to find uh, the, those dots and delete it to make it more like a 3D uh, simulation. You can carefully select all these nodes and delete it using pen tool. Uh, when you hover over the dot, uh, it will give you an option to delete it. Just like this. I'll passport the video for the other letters. Right now, we're almost done with the end letter as well. Right. So we select the element and uh, add a little bit of darker color so we can uh, easily recognize how the uh, 3d uh, has been applied to it now i think the simulation is good now i select the object and make a duplicate by pressing alt and drag so i will carefully manually place it right on the edge of the other element now since this copy is on front of it i will go right click arrange and go to back so it will go to the backward so now i have something like that so it's becoming more 3d and you can easily identify by changing the uh, back color to the little bit darker and then i select both of them and i make another copy by clicking and dragging and i align this point to edge of the other element so it will perfectly align and i'm going to send it back again 
all right and then i'm going to combine these two so i can give it a little bit of more shadow that's the idea of having this duplicate so this will act like a shadow so i will make it a little bit more darker as well so now we, we set up the element that we need in order to create the scenery so now i need the outline the white outline now i unlock the layer and then I go to edit copy and edit paste the original blue layer that we had and then I uh, switch back to the fill color to stroke and then put white for the stroke and then put around like two pixel outline yes the white color one and then shift it little towards the top left so you will get something like that make sure you align with the r so once you align with one letter it will align with the other so something like that so it gives a little bit of uh, more dynamic feel to the 3d effects so now it's time to create the color so i i create a background and i put uh, put uh, that background on the bottom layer because that's where it's belong otherwise everything will be covered so i select this one and i put uh, I put fill color uh, of uh, orange because it gives me a lot of good contrast between my uh, blue color. Make sure you send it backwards because otherwise you will not see the shadows as well. So I click and drag to the uh, gradient palette to create a gradient just like this and adjust the gradient accordingly uh, so I can get, get a, a nice background uh, to work on my 3D. So I put a radial gradient in this case and then I swap it so I can get the lighter shade on the center of it and I uh, lock it for now because now is enough for me to work on the 3D uh, coloring. So let's add some colors and make it spice up. So I, I apply the same gradient and I just click and drag the yellow color and the pink color uh, to the bottom of. And then I, I switch to linear gradient and then with gradient tool selected, I will click and drag and see to get it like a top to bottom gradient, something like that. I'll click top to bottom or bottom to top to create this one and then I go to eyedropper tool and pick the red gradient back again so and then this case I need it in top to bottom so I go to the gradient tool back again and then um, I'll put it top to bottom so I will get this contrast uh, between the top gradient and the bottom gradient so it's in the two directions if you see first one is bottom to top uh, well, second one is uh, top to bottom so now I apply a little bit of uh, dark uh, orange uh, to indicate the shadow I'm not gonna go with too dark because it's, it's, it's so much light on the on the top element so it will be not uh, look nice if you add more darker shadow so that's why I add a little bit of uh, uh, orange so I unlock the background uh, I think it needs a little bit more light it can create sort of a good uh, contrast between it so I, I increase the light a little bit and add a little bit of more uh, brightness to it so it gives more uh, good contrast between our 3d uh, text and the uh, object and the background now we can add a little bit of uh, dynamic to it Uh, we will increase the font size a little bit, uh, the element a little bit, so it's, it's spread out through the light area and the dark area. So I select the outline object and I will create a copy in back of it. So what I'm trying to do is add the lines. So I will uh, make the fill color white for, for me to recognize it easily. So I go to swatch panels and I go to open swatch libraries, patterns and lines, basic graphic lines. So now I apply something like this. I think it's look uh, nice uh, when it's uh, bigger so if you see like uh, this I think I'm happy with this effect so I'll add transparency to it like 20%. So when you deselect it, you can clearly see that you add that dynamic effect to it. So I need to add some dots to the 
shadow as well uh, again i make a copy but this time i paste in front of it because i need the dots to be happy on the front of it so again i go to swatches panel and then i go to open swatches libraries patterns and this time i select dots because i need a little bit of dots to be applied so i, I click the first one i'm happy with this preset and i put 20 percent uh, opacity to that one as well so uh, also for the background i'll do the same i'll uh, i'll get a copy in front of it and apply the effect and then i will set that into 20 percent as well so this way you can create this amazing 3d object which you can use for your flyers uh, posters podcast covers or any promotional materials which has a good urban nice modern feel to it that's it for today's tutorial i hope you enjoy it thank you for watching it i'll see you in the next one